<clears throat> All right, there are some cities that have pretty outstanding co-working spaces and Monday is no exception to that. Right in the north of Barcelona, uh, sort of out of the reach of the city limits there. I mean, I'm right next to a playground with kids playing. It looks a pretty cozy residential area. And then bang, we've got Monday. Let's go check it out. Man, Zavi. Hello, man. How you doing, man? You right? Are you? I'm good. good. Welcome All right. to Monday. Here's Zavi, the founder of uh, Monday, and we're here on Monday as well, aren't we? Sure. I love Monday. it. Monday. But check out this view. So Zavi, where are we, man? So we are at Monday TV Double. This is the first working we open, first Monday of our short history. Hello. And you see the garden, you see the pool, yeah. you see the views. So you see the garden here, guys. We've got a swimming pool, no joke. Yeah. Uh, does anyone actually use it? Yes. November, in nope. Barcelona. It's actually so currently November the 23rd, is it, today? 23rd of November. Right? 23rd of November. And Barcelona. so where are we? So we're in Tibidabo. We're in Tibidabo, that's the north area of Barcelona. So okay. here you have all the city of Barcelona. What's next? So let's go inside. Cool, back in. Monday is a state of mind. It's a way of seeing things, not only just a day of a week. Yes, we're going down to hell now. Down to hell. We've been to That's because of the gym. Because there, <laughs> there is where you do the best of yourself. <laughs> Let's go this way to make a tour also. Small offices. We have room for every kind of company. Big ones and small ones. Big desk, office desk. <laughs> so you prepared for the hell. <laughs> of the squash. Yes. Where well, you want to peek and see the level. Anytime he came as Barcelona, he yeah. has to, I have actually, to. Okay, yeah. That's good. I have a so this is more working area. Oh, yeah? You make a bet. If you win me, you get me as a customer. If you not, you can have a supplier. No, I like that. <laughs> so you are saying that this is what you expect in a co-working. Mm -hmm. Now it's about the unexpected. Now okay? it's about the unexpected. So okay. you don't expect a gym. Like this one. Hello. We have a, a class every day in every Monday. Have a professional guy who is coming and is training you to give the best version of you. Wow. We, we, we think that sport must be in your routine, in your daily routine. It I'm helps your blood to circulate, it gives you clarity, it gives you creativity, and that, that's the way to get it. You don't have to go to the gym, you have it in your same have office. Your, yeah, exactly. What would you want to see in a co-working space? That's what I want to know. Do you think there's something missing from a co-working space? Let us know. We're getting to the canteen, to the gaming area, to the events area, to the napping room area. So we're here. Welcome to the napping room area. This is the napping room. So people actually come and sleep in there or 
Now here, yeah, as I said here, it's, it's about to relax. Yeah. Okay, so it's to retreat, speak to yourself, internal conversations, to rest, and to recharge batteries for the next bite. You see? Good night. <laughs> okay, good night. Awesome. Just let me know when lunch is ready. Safe rest. <laughs> So there's here the more napping rooms, yeah. obviously included in the in the fee. Yes. You can do also a, a meeting here. I mean, some some kind of I would say more more introversial, or if you want to think about the concept of your company, where where are you going, and you need a space with with zero noise and and with no distractions because here there are no views, there's there's no noise. Yeah. We haven't played squash, but we have to play ping pong. Yeah, we'll play ping pong. That's a big cliche, but no? let's do it. <laughs> well, we'll play one game. You want to play FIFA? We'll just, let's, I'll prefer ping pong. Ah. Well. <laughs> so space now, yeah. So now we're coming into what is the space now? This, this is, is the gaming room. This is the gaming room. Yes, and events also. Okay. We do events here. So you can see there's got FIFA over here. FIFA set up. Um, so yeah, you know, Zavi, we're sitting here in the most amazing, somewhat like LA-esque, beautiful house with views from the harbor and the port of Barcelona all the way to Polano and the beach, the mountain behind us. Uh, is George Clooney next door? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Yeah, that's, I like that. Um, but we're at a co-working co space, right? Correct. We have, <laughs> we're in an office. Okay, that's the first part important. We're at Monetary Davo. This, this is an office. It has everything that an office needs to have. Okay, that's the first thing. But on top of that, we have more things, different things. Uh, pool, garden, have you seen it? And then we, we, we picked this location because we think about spending, what about spending the whole day in the same place and giving you all the services that you may need in, I would say, in a routine, daily basis routine, okay? Mm -hmm. With no special needs. So we have a napping room in the case you need to relax, we have a gym, we have a squash, we have a canteen, we have a gaming area, events area, a garden and a pool. So it's probably easy to say what don't you have, and that would be a shorter list. <laughs> we don't have a Zara inside. You don't have a Zara inside, <laughs> so you can pick up some, some garments and Correct. things. Correct, but now with e-commerce, it's easy, so. It's very true, and Amazon Prime in, in, in Spain. But Zavi, so you know, we're in a co-working space, right? And obviously it's a co-working space like I've never seen before. It is gorgeous. Um, but take me back to the beginning of, of, of co-working in Barcelona because co-working uh, in any startup ecosystem, you know, globally, is typically one of the first movers, right? You'll have people and a scene developing in its early, early, early infancy days. And you need somewhere to house the people who are starting to create ideas and create initiatives to activate entrepreneurship. And that starts typically with co-working spaces, right? Um, so take me back to the beginning because obviously this isn't something that's been around for too long. When did co-working start and, and what's been the journey of co-working in Barcelona? So I would say that co-working, as, as the world understands the word of co-working, okay, it started like 10 to 15 years ago in Barcelona. But it's been since the last five years, which it really boomed. Um, 
the landing of WeWork in Barcelona, the landing of spaces in Barcelona, for us, uh, speaking as a citizen, it has been an indicator of that something is happening here in Barcelona in terms of startup ecosystem, um, changing the culture of the, of the workers, of the offices, um, people understanding that having a good office is a way to retain talent also. Um, things that you can understand as a perk for your workforce. Mm. Things that maybe you, you wouldn't think about that, okay? Because it's the first time, or the first, I would say, how would I say it? The first uh, yeah, time first in... wave or initiative? No, I, just, I would say we haven't asked before first wave to, our, or to the workforce, mm. where do you want to work? So yeah, so you I know, mean, so the office is in that street, in that number, in mm. that floor. So yeah, so, so I mean, if you want to join our team, you will mm. come here. And if you were not okay with that, you were not okay with that. But that's all. So it was an idea for you. You were not sharing it to mm. your colleagues. But now, since five years ago in Barcelona, where you work is also part of of your company values. Mm. But that's a very good point you make, actually, because traditionally, and I see what you mean there, um, working for a company, any company, Pepsi to Microsoft to whoever, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, they would have a head office. And, you know, if you got a job there, you would work in that office. There was no choice of where you could work. No it was, choice. you work for us, this is our office, be there by nine to five every day of the week, right? Whereas that's not realistic in the today's world because, obviously, you know, cities are growing from the inside out. It's no longer really affordable to live in the city center where a lot of the offices are. So giving employees now uh, the, the ability to have flexibility in where they, where they work. So not just having one location in the city center, which costs money to get to, time, rush hours, uh, the commute, all that stuff. Now, by having locations spread around the city, you give the same employee for the same company, the option to work in the same space, just in different areas, right? Yeah, and you're, you're working in an office mm. with everything set up, but on remote, mm. and that's all. You're not in the headquarter, but you are working for that company anyway. Mm. So how did the waves then you know, kick off? So you mentioned that there were the first movers uh, for many, many years ago, like Makers of Barcelona in 2012 and a few others. We've, we've interviewed um, uh, Cecilia. Check that out. I'll put a link to the video up, uh, above here. That's a really, really fun one. Um, what happened then? So, I mean, did people take it seriously? Were they like, oh, welcome co-working. This is the greatest thing. Or uh, was it a slow burn? It was quite fast. And the big move, it was not coming, in my opinion, from startups because you assume that the startup will go to a co-working. Mm. I think this is inside the modern age, something traditional to, to think. Mm -hmm. The big move here is coming from the corporations, the big ones, the old ones, and from the small and medium companies in Spain, which is really the big, I would say, the, the big gross of population, the big part of the people, mm. they are working for, for small companies and medium companies. And once they make the move and they understand and they know what a co-working is, that's a real change. Mm. That's what everything happens and when activates this new trend that in Barcelona we have now with co-workings. Mm -hmm. You make a good point there about the fact that co-working, it's taken a while to be accepted here, right? Yeah. But it's purely because people didn't quite see the value that it brought initially because they saw it as a playground for entrepreneurs, right? Because often co-working and, you know, like I said, they start at the beginning of the, of the, of the scenes development, right? They're one of the first movers. And with that comes the scenes immature and underdeveloped, meaning that obviously people looking at co-working that are associated to these, you know, people playing around with tech and ideas, right? Trying to change the game. Uh, I can imagine obviously co-working gets a, you know, gets associated with that entrepreneurial trend at the beginning, but it just takes time for it to mature. Mm -hmm. And have we, have we reached maturity here now? I would say that we are on the way, mm. on the way to. So th the big question here is, why can I have Google's offices mm. for my company? Um, Google is not a playground, <laughs> biggest company mm. most ever. But you see them as, as, as kids working and <laughs> it is not that. They're making a lot of money mm. and they are serious and they are tough. So what about having the same offices for everyone? Yeah. So that's, that's a good question, you know, and that's what we try to, to give is our service to our workers.
But what led you to do this? What's your personal startup journey? Because, you know, only two years ago you launched this initial one. Yeah. Now you have two more. You've told me about plans for many more coming around Spain. We're opening Madrid now in next year. Exciting. But take me back to the beginning. Why did you uh, decide when you went into entrepreneurship to start a co-working space? Okay. So. <laughs> it's a mix of, of things. It was a, you put in, in, in a cocktail bar. You, you, you will see why now. And I see it clearly now that three years ago, two years ago. Um, I'm a marketing guy. My background is marketing in, in big companies. I want to, to see how the customer, how the worker, how the client touches the product. And I think that in co-working, you see it's, it's tangible. Mm. You, 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 you can touch the product, you, you can feel it. It's an experience, it's a service, and everything wrapped together, it's, it's Monday now. I come from marketing, then I moved to um, commercial real estate, in which there you see how they touch the product. And, and I guess that that's a natural path for me. It's, it's logic, it's, it's organic getting to co-working. Mm. Plus, um, I wanted to, to see how the market in terms of offices is, is going to embrace the idea of, of having co-working in Barcelona. Mm. Uh, in the world it was quite known, but not here not three years ago. It was known, but not as it is today. So were you inspired by any specific space that sort of led you to, uh, to do this? Well, I, I was inspired, but I don't know if, if I have to say, but when you see people, or when you saw people working in Starbucks, then the inspiration comes as you were watching, or you were seeing some guy, some girl, working in a, in a tiny table mm. and they were there because of the good coffee but also the Wi-Fi. Mm. So if, if you move this and, and you change this game, then you get an office prepared to work, mm -hmm. then you have the coffee too. Mm. But um, the inspiration sadly is coming from a bad experience, not a positive one. Mm. But the idea to make better but again, I mean, that's another great example of an entrepreneur who had a problem and created a solution for it. And that's exactly what you've done. We are now living in a very pivotal point in uh, the world of work, right? Because a lot of my friends and many of you watching this too have and listening to this as well may have been told by your employer, hey, you don't need to come into the office anymore. And actually, in fact, you never need to again. And, you know, just set yourself up, deliver and we'll be happy, right? So... What is the future of working and, and maybe what is the future of co-working too? The future of co-working is the future of offices in the end. Co-working is, is another pillar in this big ecosystem of where to work. Okay, mm. You can work from home, you can go to the headquarters, you can go to a bar if you want to, or you can go to a co-working. I mean, there, there are many places where you can work, you can go to the beach. I mean, in the end, it's about doing your job remotely. Mm. Um, if you prepare your houses like this one, the better the possible, then people will come to you. Mm. And the more houses like this, the more assets like this inside the cities, not in the coolest area, not in the offices area. I'm saying about going deep into the neighborhoods and approaching the office to the worker, mm. not the other way, which is the model that we had since one year ago. Mm. Uh, for me, that's the future. So it's going to the neighborhood, to going to, to the house of the workers, telling them that you have a solution better, better than being in their home. Because mm. I feel like this uh, space right now we're in, Monday at Tibidabo, the original one, the beautiful LA mansion looking over Barcelona, is a great metaphor for the reality of, uh, of what work is today. Because work is today not about being in the city center, in the commuting, you know, being disturbed by, uh, by, by being in a cubicle, for example, right? Work today is about blending, um, you know, comfortability, um, uh, resources, uh, things around you, for example, your utilities, um, a swimming pool, a <laughs> gym, but blending that all into one and, and showing, you know, we've proven that you can work from anywhere, right? And proximity. And proximity. I think that proximity will be um, proximity understood as the time that you have to get from your home to the office. Mm. This time, which in the end is location proximity, it will be a, a KPI mm. for the decision of our customers in the next five mm. years. 
Do you see yourself along that metaphor setting up um, locations in different boroughs? You know, so this is a, a nice. Obviously, I don't know what what's this borough famous for? And a university, and is it wealthy part of town or? Is a wealthy yes, it is. But our workers here, most of them, they are neighbors. Mm, exactly. I would say motorbike, mm. five, eight minutes, mm. not more. That's what I got the feeling of looking around here. And, and I learned this something very interesting when I interviewed Maria Banos from WeWork. She yeah. said that their space, and I think that's actually quite relevant for co-working spaces in general, it, you know, each co-working space of theirs in different locations is a direct representation of what's around there. Literally, I mean, 100% agree mm. with her. Yeah, 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 that's and that, right. And that's what this is right now. So you go to the one in uh, Pablo Nor, maybe, if you set one up there, that'll be a representation of a bit more kind of creative arts and, and cool culture. Go to the port and maybe it's a bit more logistics and, you know, organizations and startups working in that industry. Go to the financial district. Again, it's going to be people maybe working in fintech companies, insurance tech. And, you know, go to the beach and maybe it's surf tech, if that's a thing. <laughs> no, but, no, but not surf tech, but... In, at Monday Barcelona, we have a lot of uh, foreigners. Mm. That's a nice narrative, actually. Um, it's a nice narrative to think of co-working. Uh, traditionally, has been reserved for cities and, and, and city boroughs, but now co-working moving further at home because the reality is of the future of work that I keep seeing is that you know, now my friends in London working for Deloitte and Facebook and Goldman Sachs, right? Yeah. They've all been told that they're never going to go back to the offices. If they, they, if they don't want to. If they don't want to, exactly. And instead, uh, they're doing deals with co-working chains. Now, a lot of my friends uh, and many of you watching this and listening to this too might be thinking, okay, you know, we've all had these dreams of living in Lisbon or, or Barcelona from London, uh, f maybe uh, LA from uh, Newark, wherever, right? Mm -hmm. And now this is becoming possible purely because um, we can and our businesses are allowing us. But I can imagine that the next big wave then uh, is going to be on spaces for you to work in because of course we can all work from home but ultimately it's always nice to go to a space like this where there are other people surrounded that maybe you know we've 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 learned with um social distancing uh, that social distancing shouldn't be called social distancing it should be called physical distancing right because we've realized with social distancing that the one thing we missed was the social aspect right and even onboarding team members you know you you, you lose the flair uh, and that real team morale, um, that gel that holds you together because you can't have that one beer together, you can't have that coffee meeting. So maybe co-working spaces are the future of work. I think they are. Mm. You need a space to gather, to be together at least mm. once a week. Mm. But you need to communicate with your, with your colleagues. Uh, not having video calls for everything, you need to interact, mm. see the faces. Um, talk to them, not only about work not only about the project we are involved together mm. you need to ask how is it i mean how are you doing what are you doing how's your family um, these kind of things i think that through video calls through calls it's not that warm mm. uh, it's a bit cold right mm. and you need place, places to to gather to meet to communicate and here we are mm -hmm. i don't know if it's i mean i know it's the future of working mm. uh, but you, we have to see co-workings as the new offices. So that's the word. Co-working is the new office. Uh, we are an office. Mm. I think that's a really way, a nice way to put it, that it is the new uh, office. Because also, co-working was, many years ago, a thing reserved for startups and tech people and entrepreneurs, Only, right? Yeah, it was this stereotype, at exactly. least in Barcelona, mm. that the co-workings were made only for that one entrepreneur or entrepreneur that was um, trying and struggling to make their own company, uh, but not anymore. Mm. Uh, we have big, co big companies here, big corporations, which are our workers now. Um, that's, that's the jump, that's the really move of this trend, mm. that it's, it's involving the whole world. And this, this pandemic um, has accelerated this, mm. for sure. That's definitely where I think, yeah, working for me, go. I would say that people now understand, or they know, that co-working is an office. That's, that's for us, I would say, the, the big change. Mm. So the press has explained, well explained, well defined what co-working is to the whole population. Mm. And they have understood that it is an office for them and for any worker to, to perform better. Mm. Because you have a mix of everyone in here, right? There's startups, yes. there are people who are lawyers and accountants and everything, right? If you like this video, please like it here down below. 
then subscribe to this amazing channel, The Unicorn, and come by to Monday, and you attend you one. It's an amazing space. I highly recommend you coming by. Thanks, Savi. And Thank you. Savi, man, if you had to describe Barcelona's startup ecosystem yeah. in one word, how would you describe it? Promising. I think it's a word. Thank you so much, mate. Thank you for inviting me into your home, which is Monday. And I mean, you can all see how beautiful this place is. I uh, highly recommend you checking it out. If you're looking for a space in Barcelona, you have two other spaces more in the city center. Yeah. Uh, more coming uh, in Madrid. You're opening in the spring of next year. Good luck with that, mate. Thank you. I just want to sum up a few things uh, that Zavi said. Um, firstly, I mean, co-working isn't for just startups and tech people. Co-working is now the new working for anyone uh, and you've seen that it's testament to all the spaces I go to we're seeing organizations accountants lawyers doctors those traditional services and industries that have existed for generations are now moving into co-working spaces because they see the benefit that it allows their employees a location independence I can choose the Monday up in TB double I can choose the Monday by the water uh, I can choose the we work in diagonal right I can choose different spaces in different locations but I still gain the benefit of that community feeling yes you have a network, so if you're moving around the city, you can have a Monday next to you. Mm. That's a good thing too. There you go. And ultimately, all of this is going into contributing to us living better, healthier uh, lives, really, because we can um, see more of our children, our, our partners, our parents. Uh, also, if we travel, when restrictions allow, you know, you're going to have a Monday in Madrid soon. I'll, I'll be in Madrid and I have a space. I don't have to worry about trying to find that Starbucks Correct. with bad Wi-Fi and <laughs> okay coffee. Um, coffee. But I think that's really well said. Zavi, thank you so much uh, for having thank me. Thank you for coming, Matt. I'll put a link to Monday, all their spaces below. And uh, if you want to get in contact with Zavi, let me know. I'll put you in contact with this guy. He's very friendly and he gives the best tours, trust me. <laughs> thank Cheers. you for listening. And thank, thank you, Matt, for coming. <sighs> all right. So that's it from Monday in Tibidabo north of the city in Barcelona, an amazing co-working space. Uh, thank you, Zavi, for having me. Thank you for the little goodie bag. I promise you this is not sponsored by him. But it was interesting to hear his point of view on the future of work and how co-working spaces aren't just reserved for the likes of entrepreneurs and tech people. Anyway, I'll see you in the next episode.